Hey everybody, and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's totally free, and I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays with the occasional bonus live video. And also, if you click below, you'll find a link for my Facebook group. We do a lot of fun things in there. I give you guys some exclusives, so be sure to join. It's a lot of fun. We have a good time getting to know each other. Today, I'm going to tell you guys all about No So Mickey Ears. I am not somebody who can sew. I never have been able to. So after working out a ton of kinks when making these ears and getting all the sizing right, I'm ready to show you guys how to make these adorable ears. We're going to actually make these ones right here, these adorable buffalo plaid ones. But I brought some examples to show you all the neat things that you can do with your ears. You can do them without bows and with some appliques on them. I did some Winnie the Pooh inspired ears. Lion King. We have ones that look like Olaf from Frozen, and then of course we have our Frozen inspired ears. They're really, really easy to do once you do them and try it out. It's so much fun and you can be super creative and super personal and show off your personality through your Disney Mickey ears. Let's go over to Design Space. I will have the templates available for you guys down in the description below, but I'm also going to give you guys the measurements in the video and they will be in the description below if you want to make your own templates. So let's get started. Over in Design Space, I'm going to make sure you guys have a link to get this template. It will be in the description below, but I'll also give you the measurements I used to make this. So I used a full circle at 3.94 inches, and then I used the smaller circle at 3.778 inches, and I just sliced it out right here of the bottom. And you don't want to go too far up, only maybe like, I would say, a quarter of an inch. And then you just slice it and your full shape should be 3.974 by about 3.545. Now, obviously, that is totally subjective and you can do them a little bit bigger or a little smaller. It's not really going to change too much, but that's the measurements that worked really well for me. So what we'll do first is I'm going to show you guys how to make a custom setting for your EEA foam. I already have one made, but if you needed to make a custom setting, do a test cut and see what cuts almost all the way through your foam. And once you figure that out, you know how to redo another setting. So to do a custom setting, you go over here to the little three lines, click on this, and you're going to go right where it says manage custom materials. You're going to click on that and it takes a second to load and your machine does need to be on. Mine is not. So we're going to make sure we get our machine on but it does need your machine on so that it can tell which machine you're using and it can set the cut settings to that. So what we'll do is we're going to let this load. Sorry about the loud noises from my machine. And again, this is only for maker. Like you're not going to be able to cut this on your Explore, but you could cut this as a template and then hand cut the design if you wanted to. So I'm going to go down here and they're done by alphabetical order. And I'll first show you the one I came up with. So what I came up with was EVA Custom. And the reason I came up with EVA Custom was because I tried EVA Foam and it needed to cut a couple times in order to get it far enough through that I can pull it out. So I just made my own custom setting and I used the same pressure, but I cut it three times. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to make a setting. You're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and you're gonna click Add New Material. And we're gonna just name our material, um, we'll make it EVA Foam 2. We're going to click on um, save and it's going to bring you up here where it's going to be under its um, alphabetical order here and you can change your pressure so you can slide it or use the little plus minus signs and then we will take it and you can tell it how many times you want it to cut. So we'll say three times and then you want to make sure you use the right blade. So in this one, we're going to use the deep point blade. That one works really, really well. And sometimes it will move your pressure and change your time depending on your blade choice. So you'll want to change that back. So maybe change your blade choice first. It just depends. And then you can just click on save. I'm not going to click save because I already have the setting, but you would just click save and there is your custom setting. So we'll just go ahead and delete because we don't need that one. Once you're done, you go all the way again, back down to the bottom and click on done. Now all we have to do is click on make it. And I'm gonna make two of these at once just because I know that I can fit two of them pretty easily onto the sheets that I cut. We'll click on continue. And I'm gonna show you how to find your custom material. 
and then I'm going to show you guys how we're going to cut it in the maker and I'll show you how to put the deep cut blade in but you'll see that your material isn't going to be on this little board so you're going to need to go to browse all materials and we know that we called it EVA so we'll just use those first couple letters and we're going to use the one that says EVA custom click on done and it's going to tell you that you want to make sure that you load your deep point blade in and that you want to make sure you load your mat. So I'm going to show you guys how to insert your deep point blade. So this is your blade holder and all you do is you just open the latch and pull your blade housing out. You do not need the deep cut housing blade for this. All you do is you press down on this and you'll have your old blade pop out. I'd already had my deep cut blade in and you'll just pull your old regular silver blade out and then for your black tip this is uh, the deep cut it is black you just push it right in there and just drop it in they're magnetic so it'll hold in and then you just insert your holder and close it back up making sure that you get this nice and latched I'm going to show you guys how we're going to cut our foam you want to make sure that you move your star wheels over to the side and with this project I do prefer to have them over to the right side more so than this side and I do have some fuzzies on here from previous cuttings that I've done but you just slide them over super easy you can leave this one he's not really in the way and what you're gonna do is load your foam now you can see that I've cut it down so that two ears fit on it so we're gonna load our foam and all we're gonna do is hit the go button and I'll let you guys watch it cut really quick but I'm not gonna make you watch it cut all three times it doesn't take super long but it does a really nice job, but it still will not cut it all the way through, which is totally fine because it's super easy just to pop it right out of the EVA foam. And you'll see that it does make sure you have your blade in, and you can see that I have all the fuzzies from previous projects. So what I'm going to do is try to see if I can get some of those fuzzies off while we wait. Sometimes you can, just depends. But I cut some fluffy fabric on there, so now we've got fuzzies everywhere. So you can see that it's cutting out our ear shape right here. So it's going to go around each ear three times, and then once it's done, we will pull it off the mat, and I'll show you that part. So you can see where it cut our ears out, but it didn't cut them fully out, which is totally okay, because this foam is really easy to work with. You can just pop the ears right out. And I found that when it cut all the way through, it tended to lift them a little too much, and it sometimes made a bit of a mess. So I didn't mind that it didn't cut them all the way out. I just liked it and it was easy to do this. And you can see how easy they come out and they come out nice and clean and you just make a hole and then just work your way around them, pulling them away from the rest of the foam. I'm gonna get the rest of these cut out and then I'll show you guys how to do the fabric. The next piece that we need to cut is our ear fabric. And this is gonna be bigger than your ear foam because it's gonna wrap around the foam. So for this one, I used a 5.119 inch circle and a 2.889 inch square and I put that square about 0.7 inches past the bottom of the circle to make the little tab. You can absolutely make it a little bit shorter but that's where I put mine and you want to make sure that it's centered on your circle. Again, this will be available down in the links below so make sure you check those out because that will have the templates for these for the Cricut. So all we have to do with these, really super easy, is click on Make It. I'm going to move this a little bit further away too. The reason I'm doing this is the fabric that I'm using. I'm using a flannel fabric, and it does have a little bit of a tendency to shred. So we're just going to cut three, and I'll cut the fourth one separately. So I'm going to show you guys what settings to use. We're going to hit Continue. And for this, this is a cuddle fabric. It is the cuddle flannel from Joanne Fabrics in Buffalo Plaid. So I cut this one, I click Browse All Materials, and then I search the word flannel. And you, again, you don't have to type it all the way in. And I just cut this on the regular flannel setting. I will show you guys how to load our rotary blade, and then we can get these cut. We need to load our rotary blade, which comes with your maker. That's why this is a maker craft. You could do this with your Explorer, but you will need bonded fabric. So this is your rotary blade. You'll just open clamp A, and you're going to take this blade out. You want to make sure you put that in a safe spot. You don't want to lose that. And then this one has the plastic coating around the gears. So you want to make sure the open portion of that plastic is back against the back gears. And then you just close your clamp. We are going to go ahead and hit continue and load it. And I'm going to show you. We're going to use our pink fabric mat 
with our buffalo plaid. I cut it into a 12 by 12 square. I'm gonna go ahead and get this loaded. Now with this one, it's okay if your star wheels are still moved to the side, but for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and pull them back to about where they were. It's gonna help hold the fabric down. This one's a little tough to get to because of where, they, where it shoves itself. So you can just shove it out a little bit, use your nail. But the ones that get real close to the edge there are kind of tough to work with. So you may just need to kind of shove them with your nail. But I'm going to go ahead and let those run over this. This is just flannel, so it should run over with the star wheels just fine. You want to make sure that your fabric does not have any wrinkles in it or as few as humanly possible. And then we're going to let this rotary blade do its magic. So I'm going to move you guys back a little bit just so you can see. And again, I did cut this in a 12 by 12 square, which with this, super easy because these are one inch um, squares. So you just have to cut really easy and count to 12 and it's done. So now what you're going to see it do is it's going to move our rotary blade. I will tell you the rotary blade does lift and spin occasionally during its cutting. So don't worry if it lifts and spins around. It's just moving so that it can easily cut your design. I'm going to let it cut these out and I'm going to show you guys taking it off the mat. We have the fabric all cut out, so we're just going to go ahead and pull our fabric off of our mat. And like I said, this one does tend to fray on the edges a little bit, but that's okay with this design. It's not a big deal because we won't see any of the frayed edges. So I just peel the fabric right off the mat, and you can see how beautifully this cut. I love the rotary blade for stuff like this. It makes life so much easier, especially for someone who no way in their right mind could ever cut these out. By themselves but you can see the edges do fray on this fabric so it's something to keep in mind when you're doing these ears is a fabric that is easy to work with I'm gonna cut out the last piece that we need and then we can get over to the ears and get started the first thing that you need to do when putting your Mickey ears together is to take your foam pieces and you're gonna glue two of them together this just makes the foam a little bit more stiff because it's a little bit squishy without that second layer. So I found adding a second layer really helps. So all I do is I just take some hot milk glue, I put my finger at the bottom just to hold the ear in place, and then I draw a nice arch, and I just sort of follow the lines of the ear, and I just make sure I have quite a bit of hot glue. Then you're gonna take one other foam ear and line it up and stick it right on top. The nice thing is the EVA foam really likes hot milk glue, so the second you pretty much touch it to it, it's fused which I like. So we're gonna do that to all of our ears. So it's really quick, simple. This is the easiest probably part of the whole thing and it only takes just a few seconds and it really doesn't take a ton of glue. I just use enough glue that it's gonna hold them together. And again, remember you need four of these. So you need a total of eight pieces of foam and you'll need four ears. So we'll just get this last two together. Now I did just get this hot milk glue gun. I love it, it is cordless, it is a Ryobi. Uh, Home Depot has a deal, and I don't know how long it goes, but there is a deal where you buy the battery packs and you get a free tool. So I got this, and I got the batteries, and then I also got a rotary tool because this was a super cheap tool. But I really like this cordless hot milk glue gun. It just makes life so much easier, and I can glue anywhere. I don't have to be near a plug. So we'll just get these all glued down. And as you can see, we just line them up so that they are nice and even. So once you've done that, these really don't take much time to dry, so you can start on your fabric right away. So what I do is you put it color side down, so face down, and you're going to take one of your little foamy ear pieces, and you're just going to line it up pretty well centered to your fabric. You want to make sure that your little archway is kind of centered with the flat piece here, and then we're going to work in a really small space around it. So we're just going to take a little bit of hot milk glue and you want to put it pretty close to the edge of your foam. And like I said, you don't need to put a ton down. You just want to work in small sections and you're going to fold your fabric over. And how I fold mine over is I pull it with my finger as I go. And that just helps it to lay a little bit flatter. And if you get some of these little extra pieces, because depending on your fabric, you may have a couple pieces that stick up a little bit. Like I've got a little cave, as I call it right there. I just take my hot milk glue gun and stick it in there. And I just put a little bit of glue. And if you have a little glue leakage, totally okay. Nobody is going to find it or see it, so it's fine. So you're just gonna go around the whole ear, just like that. And again, I just work in small sections. And you just wanna pull your fabric over your ear and you just want to press it down as you go. There's a reason you work in small sections so that the glue doesn't dry, dry too fast because this glue tends to dry pretty quickly. So you just push it down and I try to go on one side and then to the other side 
and you want to make sure that you're getting under the fabric flap because you'll have a little bit of a flap from where you stopped pushing your fabric over earlier. Now if you have little like folds in your fabric it's totally okay we're gonna put the ears all together so I wouldn't worry about it and I always end up with these little stringies they drive me nuts but I think it's my glue more than anything I got this glue real cheap and I don't love it so keep in mind if your glue stinks don't worry about it it's fine so we're just gonna take our fabric and again just push it over now you may end up with a little spot where it's kinda tight and you may not quite have a ton of fabric at the end and that's okay a lot of times it's just because you weren't fully centered but the nice thing is these give you a little bit of leeway to not be fully centered so this doesn't have to be perfect which I think is nice because it doesn't take a lot of effort to put these together now you're gonna leave the bottom open and you'll see simple as that you can just see we glued all the fabric around because these are no sew ears and you're gonna leave this open you're gonna leave that open because we are going to fill this we're gonna make them puffy and all we're going to use is polyfill. I got a giant bag of it real cheap, so I have a ginormous bag that will last me from now until forever. So all I do is I take some polyfill, and I always grab way more than I need, but I tend to pull mine apart. So I just go like this a little bit and just pull it apart so that it's just not as clumpy. Because I find if I don't do this, I end up with like clumps, and it bothers me, and I'm just, I'm not all about clumpy ears. So I just try to pull apart a bunch of the clumps and then you take just a small amount you don't want to put a ton in these because you just want them to look a little puffy you don't need them to be like stuffed animal puffy you just want enough puff that they look really cute and professional so we're just going to add some puff to them and again this is kind of personal preference you can add puff you can leave them flat it's just what you want I just like to add the fluffing I just think it looks really really cute so we're going to shove the fluffings in and you want to make sure that you have it fluffed kind of everywhere. So you want to feel around your ear because sometimes you'll have like the edges may not get a lot of fluff in them. So what I do is I just take my finger and kind of work it around inside and push the fluff into those crevices. And then I just make sure that there is enough fluff to fill this little base part. And I can always check by just folding this part over and I look at my ear and I just make sure that it's how I like it. I think it's good. It looks puffy. So then what you're gonna do is take a, your glue gun and run a bead of glue all down this part of the ear. So right along that curved edge, take your flap and carefully fold it over. If you get a little bit of puff on there, it's fine. You just fold that over and then all you're gonna do is press your fabric down into it. And you can easily just sort of manipulate it a little bit, make sure there's no wrinkles. And I think that looks really good. So all I do then is fold this piece of fabric back because you want to glue this onto the back of your ear. So I just put a line of glue just to hold my fabric down. And again, it's okay if you have a little bit of like glue seeping out. So I'm going to get the rest of these glued up and then I'm going to show you how to put them together. Now that we have stuffed all of our ears and they're puffy and cute, we need to glue them together like a sandwich. I liken this to taking two uncrustable sandwiches and sticking them together. So what I do is I will take one of my ears and I will put a bunch of hot melt glue all around it. You don't have to go right to the edge because we are going to do the edge separately. I just find it works a little bit better if I don't go all the way to the edge and I may need to glue this piece of fabric down a little bit. But I do put quite a bit of glue on because you want to make sure they stick. And then you just sandwich them together. You want to make sure you line up the bottoms so I always try to make sure that my tips are lined up then what I do is I literally just stick them on the table flat while making sure that the bottoms are lined up and I just hold them down for a while because it does take a minute and you want to make sure the glue is really really dry before we move on to our next step this part is probably the most boring part of this whole adventure but it is really necessary. So once you've held it down for a few minutes, and it really was only like 30 seconds, and I do have a lot of like fluffies on this, you'll see that you still have kind of a big gap in your hole or in your ears, leaving a pretty big hole. So what I do is I go a little side by side and I just put quite a bit of glue. You don't want so much that it like seeps out the side. And then I just pinch it together, just like so, right where I put the glue. And then I do the same thing where I just hold it. If I have some seeping glue, I'll let it cool down a little bit and I'll just run my hand over it, but you'll cover most of the seeping glue. 
if you do have any when we do the edging on these because I like to edge my ears I think it just makes them look a little more finished and it gives you an option to kind of add your own little flourish to them so we are just going to let this cool down because this part is super important and it likes to come apart so it's really important that you hold this until it no longer comes apart so it does take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go around and finish this one off and finish the rest of the ears. So that's all you're gonna do, just put glue in all the edges and you'll see this one's got a really big gap. So we're gonna glue it and hold it. So now that we have our two ears stuffed, we'll need to cover the headband. This part is totally optional. You do not have to cover your headband. It would look just fine with these on the black headband. It looks just fine. But we'll cover it to show you guys how to do that. So what I do is I'll take my fabric and lay it out. Now this is a really big piece, so it's kind of bunched up in the corner, but it's fine. And I just take my headband and I start it at one end and then I just roll it down the fabric just to see how much I need. So it looks like I need to go to probably about there to cut out. And I always make sure I have extra, so I just go a little bit further and I'm gonna cut out these three squares. So it's just a three inch piece in width. We're gonna trim it down a little bit once we get it cut out so that it'll fit on our headband a little bit better. But for me, this is just an easy way to do it. I always just cut it kind of bigger than I need because you can always trim it down. It's a little bit easier than having to measure it perfectly and end up screwing something up. So put your fabric to the side, you don't need that. But now we have this bigger piece, which I'm gonna put face down. And I'm just gonna take my headband and I just kind of make sure that I have enough, which I have plenty, because again, I overcut. I always cut more than I need. And then I'm just going to kind of check with how far it looks like it's going to flop over because you're gonna need to fold this so that either side goes onto your headband. So it's like this, but this is like way too much as far as width is concerned. So what I'm gonna do is trim this side down to about, just a like maybe a quarter inch to half an inch off of the square. Again, buffalo plaid is really easy to work with fabric because it has the squares, so you can totally use those as a guideline. Now, towards the end down here, where the thinner pieces of our headband are going to be, we'll probably need to trim once we put our headband in, but I'll do that once it's on the headband. It's just easier. There are templates and stuff you can use. I never really worked one out. So what you'll do is you'll take your headband and find about center on the fabric. Doesn't have to be exact, but I like to try to get sort of close. And then you're just gonna take some hot milk glue and you can do it one of two ways. You can put it right on the fabric or you can put it on the headband. I'm actually gonna put mine on the headband just cause I can make it a little bit um, flatter that way and not have a big lump of hot milk glue. So I'm just gonna press it down and then I will typically take it and pull it towards me and flip my fabric over. That way if there are any bumps or it's like really got like a big chunk, I can just flatten it out. And all I do is just kind of rub the hot melt glue down a little bit, just in case I had any bumps or lumps that I didn't like. So once that's pretty well dry, it only takes a second or two because you put it on really thin, you're just gonna take and do the same thing where you're just gonna put a bunch of glue and you don't have to use a lot and I try to like thin it out just so it's again not lumpy and bumpy and you just take your fabric and lay it straight over it. And again, I just press my fabric down just like so, just to again, make sure there's not a lot of lumps and bumps. And you're gonna do that all the way down your headband. So I've moved you in just a bit closer and hopefully you guys will be able to at least get an idea. But all I do is I take a little bit of glue from my glue gun and I just put it along this inner rim of the headband. And then you just take your fabric just like you do when you do your mouse ears and you just fold it over while kind of tugging it just a little bit in towards the center. But you can see that the, t the tails of this kind of get in the way. But I can't get rid of the tails quite yet. So I'm gonna finish going around, but I'll show you one more side. I'm gonna see if I can show you this side again. So all I do is just put a little bit of glue right there. And then you just push your fabric into the glue. So I'm gonna go around. You're gonna do that the whole way around. And then I'll show you how to tuck these tails. We're ready to do these long tails, which they are way too long right now. So we are going to trim them off. And I usually leave about the depth of my thumb. So like I'll stick my thumb here and I'll cut these off just a little bit above my thumb. And again, these don't have to be perfect because nobody's really going to see them. 
So what I do is I fold them over to make kind of an envelope. And it's not always easy because again, the other tail constantly gets in the way. So I just kind of fold them over to make like an envelope. And I want to fold it a bit so that it's thinner than the headband itself. So you can see how tight I did that. And I just take a little hot milk glue and I just kind of goo it in there, which I know sounds truly disgusting. But I just put it in there and then I close it up. And I do that so that it looks nice and neat once we fold it back over. So you can see that there's some hot milk glue in there and then it's this little envelope. And once the glue cools enough that you can put your fingers on it, you want to pinch it together to keep it closed. And then there's a little glue dab, dab that was leaking out, so I got rid of that. Then all you have to do is just simply fold it over so that it makes a nice like edge and you'll want to put some glue under that but there was already a glue dab so it's kind of holding so you just want to put this is not easy <laughs> my hand keeps slipping but you just want to put a little dab of glue right under that in order to make sure that it holds and again any glue that seeps out the side you can kind of let it cool down a little bit and then I just wipe it with my finger and as soon as I get it on my finger I just kind of wipe my fingers together like that to get it off. That way I don't burn myself, but you will want to be careful. The glue is very hot. So again, I'm going to do this side. I'm just going to trim off all that excess and you can throw all that out. We don't need it. And then again, I'm going to fold this in to make a little tabby envelopey thing. I'm going to put the glue and I want to make sure that the glue kind of goes inside of both pieces because you want to make sure that all of it's going to glue together and you're just going to hold it like this. And again, you want to make sure any glue that leaks out that you just go ahead and get it off of there. And I'm going to pull this little chunk out because it got a little funky. And then you just fold it over and put a little dab of glue right on the base of your headband here. And these are the most comfortable headbands I have ever worn in my life. I am a girl that has a heck of a time with headbands because they always pinch my head. So these ones are awesome. I got them off Amazon. They are linked below for you guys because I have yet to find better ones. And I really like these. They're nice and wide and really, really comfortable. So there is your covered headband. Isn't that super cute? And if you have a little, like a bulge, I have a little tiny spot that looks like it's a little bulgy right there. I don't know how you guys can see that. It's right there. If you have that, you can just do like you did on the ears and just take a little bit of glue and stick it in there and then push it down. It really won't matter, but if it bothers you, go ahead and do that. And then what you're going to need is some velvet tape or velvet ribbon. So I'm going to go get this open and I'll show you guys what we're going to do with the velvet. So then last but not least, you're going to take this piece of velvet ribbon. And this is just like a navy color, but you can use any color. Nobody's really going to see it because it's going to be on your head. And all I do is I line my ribbon up with just about, and it's hard to see because it's navy and it's hard to kind of get an angle on this. But I just put it just a little bit in from the edge of the headband. And I'm just going to tack it down with a little bit of hot glue. So I just sort of fold it back. And I put a little bit of hot glue right where the end of it's going to be. And I just tack it down. And that's the first step. You want to try to make sure it's relatively centered on your headband. And you just sort of squish the glue in. And again, if some of it seeps out, totally okay. You can just pull it right off. No big deal. Then, just like we did with the... Um, fabric, we're just going to run this along the center. So you're just going to use a small bead of the hot milk glue and run it all along the center. Don't go all the way. You just want to go part way because you don't want to try to work the whole thing. And then you just take your velvet ribbon and you just gently press it into, and I know this is super hard to see, but it's really like self-explanatory. You just press it right into your hot milk glue and you do that all the way around your headband. Now we get to place the ears onto our headband. I always set mine on a silicone mat because when I glue them on, I just wanna make sure none of the glue sticks to my table. But the one thing that I see a lot of people do is they put the ears all the way up here so they're touching, and that's not correct. It's gonna look weird on your head and that's not how Mickey ears are done. So what I do is I try to put my um, headband kind of straight to me so I can see what it looks like. And then you drop your ears down to the sides. You don't want to go totally on the side because that looks like an elephant. You want to go just a bit above the 
sides here and then you just sort of eyeball where me where the center is and I like I said I just take the headband and I center it and then I just eyeball where it looks like the ears are you can actually mark these if you want I don't like to I just sort of eyeball it I'm gonna take one ear away and get it out of my way and I'm gonna take the second ear and I'm going to put a bunch of glue all down here on its base. You can put quite a bit on here without it seeping out, but again, you do want to be conscious and not allow too much glue to seep out. So I do put quite a bit of glue on there, and then all I'm going to do is place my headband, my ear, right onto my headband, and I will pick my headband up because you want to make sure that your ear is even on your headband from front to back, and then I just hold it until it is dry. So this part's super easy. It's just a matter of kind of figuring out where your ears should sit because again, you don't want them sitting all the way on top. You don't want them to be uneven. You want a nice good space. You could go a little further down, but not too much because you don't want them like on the side. You want them just a little bit off the center of your ears. I've made a bunch of these ears, so I don't have a lot of this rope left, but this is just a rope um, edging from Joanne. So we'll just use this. I'll do one ear and then I'll go to the store and have to buy some more to finish the other ear. But this gives you an idea and all it's gonna do is go around the edge and it's just gonna hide the little edging from where we glued the two ears together. So the way I do mine is I take the hot milk glue and I put a dot down here at the bottom and that's where our rope is going to start. So I line that up and I just squish it on in there. And again, I don't put a ton of glue because you don't want a lot like seeping out the side, but I just press that in and let that dry because you want to make sure that you're not going to pull it off of there because you need to make sure your rope goes all the way around your ear. So we're going to give that a second to dry. Let me uh, move you guys out a little bit. That's not out, that's in. <laughs> There we go, move you guys out just a little bit so you guys can see this better. So now that this is pretty well tacked on, this is a pretty stiff rope, so I'm gonna go pretty far around with my hot milk glue. You just run a fairly thin layer of hot milk glue and you wanna just run it along the seam of your ear and then you take your rope and you just roll it down to your ear. And you just can press it in a little bit. You don't wanna press it too hard because you don't want it to fall in if you have any kind of a seam that it might fall into, and then you just wanna watch for any glue seeping out. And I did totally touch right here with some glue, but luckily it comes right off the fabric, which is nice. So if you had a little glue on your finger and you accidentally touched it, it comes right off, no problem of this cuddle flannel. So we're gonna take, and again, I'm just gonna go around the edge here where you can see the seam of the ear. I do this again, it just adds a little pizzazz to your um, ears. You don't have to do this, but I like the look of it. I think it gives them a little more finished look. And again, it hides the seam, which to me is super important. So I'm going to cut them now to length. So I fold my ear, like my trimming down on my ear so I can see where the edge is and where it's going to hit on my ear. And this is not easy. I'm trying to do this at a weird angle so that you guys can see what I'm doing. But see how I have it folded into my ear? I'm gonna cut it right where it goes on my ear. So once I find that spot, I can pull it up a little bit and I can just cut it. But this is pretty thick, so it does take a little bit like sawing through your scissors. And this one will unravel, so you wanna make sure that you do have a decent amount of glue on the base. So again, I'm just gonna take and run my glue all the way down my seam. I'm gonna put a decent amount right in that little spot and then we're gonna just run our rope. Now, if the rope doesn't go all the way to the bottom, it's totally okay because the bow is going to hide this. So there is our one ear trimmed. I think it looks really super cute. You guys can see, look how cute that is. This is just a little fuzz that got on there, but look at that, isn't that cute? And it looks so much more finished this way. So we're gonna go ahead and make a bow for this. So let me go get the fabric and we can get started. We're gonna use some fairly non-conventional fabric. We are gonna use some burlap. I think this is going to be really, really cute with the um, buffalo plaid. We're kind of going for like a lumberjack vibe. So I wanted something natural. So we're going to just do this. So all I do is I just cut a kind of rectangle. Um, I don't measure anything. So there's no actual measurements to these bows. I just sort of eyeball it. But I would say it's probably, I don't know, 9, 10 inches by probably a foot. 
it's not big, it's not small, it's just kind of a rectangle. It's not, there's no right or wrong way to do this or like size wise, but you do want to kind of play with it a little bit and figure out how big your bow may be before you actually commit to making it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So once I've cut my fabric, which I'm, it looks like a crazy person cut it because I can't cut straight line. What you'll do is you'll fold it over in a core in like a third. Then you're going to fold it over again in a third. Then you'll fold it in half. Then you'll fold it in half. And I know this looks like kind of crazy, but it makes, once you kind of pinch it the right way, this is not the right way, but it makes a bow. And I'm doing this just to size it so it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's a really pretty good size. And once we glue it all together, it'll be fine. Now I will say this gets fibers on everything, so be prepared. So what you're gonna do is you can go ahead and unfold it again. And because it's cut really unevenly, this is going to be where you're going to have to try to make sure that you glue it nice and straight. Again, I can't cut a straight line, but you can always kind of get it folded together and then trim off an edge if it's really, really ragged like this one. I did cut this and use this for a bow previously, so it's probably a little bit raggy and weird from that bow. So we'll just trim it off and it's a little bit better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the silicone mat back under these, not the felt, the silicone mat back under these. This just keeps any of the glue from seeping onto my table since this is kind of fibery. And all I do is I just run a bead of glue across and I just take this and you just fold it to that glue bead. And simple as that, but you can see that the glue seeps through. So again, that's why I put the silicone mat down. So you just want to make sure, and don't do that because it comes off if you pick it up too quickly. I'm just going to slide it down a little bit just so I can finish gluing. And you're just going to glue all the way across to hold down the burlap. And you can actually use like a bigger mat. This is just what I have. I got these at the Dollar Tree, but I love using them for stuff like this. It just makes life a lot easier. But again, with these, you're going to want to make sure that you press them in because the glue likes to seep through. So you got to make sure you're really well held on. I don't know if this side's really great, but it'll do. So then you can turn it this way. And then what you want to do is try to make sure that you have folded this fairly straight so that you're making a rectangle. So that looks pretty okay. So this one, I'm going to fold up like this and I'm going to run my glue right here. And again, I'm just going to let it fold over. And be careful because the glue will get on your hands when you're doing these. This one is not, like I said, burlap is not always the easiest one to work with, but it's fine. It does take a little bit of care because you don't want to glue your hand because that's not fun. I do it all the time. I do not recommend it. And then again, I'm just moving it so the silicone mat is fully under it at all times. And I just want to make sure that this gets a little bit of glue under it. And you can see it's not perfect, but it is just fine. It will do. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now what you want to do is you're going to fold this over. Now you can glue. This one didn't glue very well. So let me re-glue this side a little bit. This side did not really glue. So what you want to do is you're going to fold this into the center. And then you're going to fold this side into the center. So I just sort of kind of figure out about where middle is and about where middle is. So I might need to move this one back a little bit because you just want them to be fairly even. They can overlap a smidge. And I'm going to fold this side over first because this one has all the weird stuff. But first what I want to do, because this one is kind of wide, is I'm going to tack these corners down. I just put a little bit of glue there and then I press it in. And you may need to put glue on the inside as well just to tack the corner down. I do that so that it doesn't end up poking out when I put the, I swear. So it doesn't end up poking out when you push it over to the other side. Cause sometimes it will poke out and it looks weird. So you just wanna kinda make sure that doesn't happen. So again, all I'm doing is pressing it down so that those corners are folded in. Again, this is like an extra step that you don't necessarily have to do, but I'm going to do it just to kind of make my life easier. So then all I'm going to do is fold it over and I'm going to figure again, try to fold it sort of centery. And you can tack your other corners if you would like, which I think I'm going to do just so it folds a little more evenly. 
So I'm going to go ahead and tack these corners down. Again, I do tend to put a lot of glue on the burlap because it is such a fibery, heavy material, and I want to make sure that it stays down. So I'm going to put quite a bit of glue on that, plus it'll go through all the layers if you put a lot of glue on it. So I'm going to do that with this one as well, and then we're just going to fold it over. And I'll sometimes use like my scissors to push it down if my fingers are starting to get a little warm, which they are. So I'll just take my scissors and push it down until the glue has gone through all the layers. And then I just, again, double check where I'm going to fold it to and where I'm going to fold it to. Because you want to try to make it fairly even with each other. Basically, you kind of want this part to be the center of your bow. Now, it looks like a really odd shape right now, but it will not once we get this done. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and kind of put my finger right where center is, right where I want to put the bow, and I'm going to put, again, quite a bit of glue because you, you want to make sure it's going to hold it. And then you're just going to fold your bow part, so this one side, over. And you can do this with any fabric. The burlap is probably not like the best choice for like somebody doing this for the first time just because it can be kind of hot and kind of messy. You can see like you're getting a lot of the glue kind of sticking through, but don't worry. Once you put the bow together, you won't even see it, so it's fine. And then this part, you're going to put the glue on top of this part of your bow. And you're just going to, again, press it down. I'm going to use my scissors on this one because I put like a bunch of glue there and I know it's going to seep through, which is fine. It's what I want it to do. So we're gonna let that sit for a second. You wanna make sure it's relatively dry before you go and mess with it. But again, like you can see the glue seeped through a little bit, but it's fine because it, we won't notice it once we actually put our bow together. I have fibers everywhere, it's a mess. This is not a clean craft, let me tell you. So now what I wanna do so that it looks more like a real bow is I will kind of fold it over and make like a pinch point here and then I'll make more pinch points by folding the rest of the bow around and kind of playing with it and seeing what looks good and depending on how you want your bow to look you can pinch it in different like ways like this one I could maybe pinch this way and then maybe pinch this front part forward and see what that looks like so it's just a matter of like the way you want your bow to look and you can see you can kind of play with it so like this is one way or you can do it where you pinch it forward and then you pinch these back and then I pinch the fronts again. So this is like a five pinch bow where it's got a little bit more volume to this part. So I think we'll do it like that. I like the look. So while I have it pinched, what I usually will do is I'll figure out about where I pinch it for the center piece. And this one is a little bit strange because this one I see that I'm actually pinching it only once or twice. I know this one's a little bit hard because it is such a thick material. So you can just play with it a little bit, like you said. So what I'll do is I'm going to fold it in half and figure out where the pinch point is for the center. And then I'll mess with the other pinch points in a minute. So as I have it pinched in the center, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue in there and then just pinch it and hold it. This part makes me always feel like I'm making those cootie catchers because it's kind of the same idea. You pinch them, you fold them, you hold them in your hand. This part does take a little bit because you want to make sure that your glue is fully dry before you let go of it because if it's not, you're going to end up with a um, mess on your hands and nobody wants that because it's going to come apart. Like if I let go now, it's starting to like come apart and we don't want that. So we're going to let this dry a little bit. If you're really talented and can do it, you can continue to pinch. But because I'm doing this with a thick, heavy fabric, I'm going to like let it dry just for a minute. So what I want to do now is I need to pinch this back portion right to here, to like this back portion. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue right there. The nice thing is with this, as I put glue on, it's not going to... Um, get the rest of the glue hot again and make that lift because I was having that problem with some of the thinner fabrics. If I put more hot glue on, it would melt the other glue and it would um, cause it to lift up, which I wasn't loving and it was kind of frustrating me when I was doing this. But I think I figured out how to fix that by using a thicker fabric. So if you're using thin fabric, you'll just wanna kinda keep that in mind when you're doing this. So I'm gonna make sure that that is down 
So this is what we have so far for our bow. Now you could leave it like this and wrap it, but I think I'm gonna fold it one more time just so that this part kind of folds down. But I'm gonna see what it looks like and we'll see if that's how we wanna do it. It's all, again, there's no wrong way to do this. You do it how you like. I think that looks pretty cute. I don't know, I think that's okay. I don't think that looks too bad. So now that we've got those pinch points point done, I'm gonna go ahead and do these last two, which is gonna be this one here and this one here. And that is very warm, so just be aware because it, it is coming through my fingers. So you, yeah, see, it's super hot. So uh, a lot of times with this, I will wear like a silicone uh, baking glove, or you can do it like this where you hold it out further and you're not actually holding the hot glue, but it is still holding it. So this part, like I said, just watch, be careful with your hands, fold your bow however you want. You can do multiple folds, you can do one fold, but it just makes it look more like a natural bow. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the twine and I'm gonna wrap the center of this. I'm gonna use this little jute rope, it's real thin twine, and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my bow. Now I'm not gonna put glue on the first wrapping because I don't really need to. Once I wrap it around, it'll hold the bottom, like the beginning of the rope, so it's totally fine. I'm gonna flip it forward just so I can get a good look at what it looks like. And I just wanna make sure that I wrap it so that all the brown is covered and it looks pretty even and it just looks like a nice thick kind of wrap here. I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is make sure it's tight and I'm gonna take a little dab of glue. I'm gonna use, again, hot glue. You don't have to sew anything for this project, which is my favorite because I can't sew. And I'm just gonna take the rope and I wanna wrap it one or two more times just so it's through the glue. And I just wanna make sure that it goes through that glue. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna get one more in through the glue and I'm gonna trim it off before it fully dries so that I can trim it right at the glue line and not have to worry about it coming unraveled. And if you need to, you can add a little bit of glue, but you shouldn't have to because it does hold pretty gosh darn well. So this is our little bow and you can see it was really easy to make. So now, obviously I will need to add the other side of the ear but we'll put the bow on so you guys can see. Now the bow can go any way you want. You can put it up you can put it this way. Just play with it and see which way it looks best. I think that way probably looks pretty good. You wanna get it fairly centered onto your ears and you'll see that you have a little bit of a ledge that you can place it on because you have this piece in the center. You wanna make sure you wrap the center of your bow if you do a bow like this. So what I do is I figure out which side of my ears is going to be the front of my ears. And I just look at them and see which side I like better or which side maybe has a better pattern on it. It just depends on the way you want them. They look pretty even. I think they look more even on this side for the front because I feel like we have more of the same black checks where this one I kind of don't. So we're gonna use this side to do it. I'm gonna take my bow and again, just take a look at it, see which side you like best. I like this side best and I want it to sit this way, I think. Yes, I think this way is best. So what I do is I take hot milk glue and I make a pretty decent sized glob right here on the edge in the front. Make sure you have your bow the correct way and I just set it on to the ledge of the ears. And at this point you can move it around a little bit. You'll wanna look at it from the front and make sure it's fairly even. Now I'm holding it down with my finger and my thumb if you see, my hands are holding it this way and my thumb is on top, and we're gonna hold that until it's good and dry. We need to make sure this is fully dry before we let go, because if not, again, you're gonna end up with an absolute mess. While you're waiting, you can totally pull some of like the fuzzies off and the little strings that come off the hot melt glue, and you can just pull all those off. Simple, easy as that. Once this is dry, I'll show you guys the finished product. And here are our finished ears, minus the trim around one of them. I'm sorry, I just thought I had more. You guys can see how easy these are to do, and what I love is that you can really show off your personality making your own Mickey ears. There's no sewing involved, and it's really simple. You can use pretty much any fabric that you like. I have used everything from the sparkles to cotton to the Minky fabrics, and they're all really easy to work with and a lot of fun. 
Your bows can be made in so many different ways or you can do them without a bow, but you can really show off who you are and what you love with your ears. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I am happy to answer those for you. Make sure to check in that description for any of the links that I mentioned throughout the video. Everything is down below for you, so everything's very easy to find. Just hit the little down arrow if you are on mobile that is right below the video. I hope you guys had a great time and happy crafting.